You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. It's July 3rd, 2018, the anniversary of the third day of the battle. And we are sitting right behind the 111th New York Monument. Uh, of course, on the other side of the street, because right behind it would be the road and we'd be getting run over by the cars that you're hearing in the background. But it's a beautiful day. It's uh, hot as hell, like 95 degrees. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to be sitting out here. This is actually the first bonus material, bonus content that has been recorded on the battlefield itself. And we are in the overall area of the second core position. And the reason we are here is because of my guest today, who is Christopher Loperfido. Loperfido? Loperfido. Loperfido, damn it. Close enough. It's, it, it, it reads one way and it should go a certain way in my head and then you say it a different way and it just screws everything up. But anyway, he wrote a book called Death, Disease, and Life at War, The Civil War Letters of Surgeon James D. Benton, which is easy to say, the 111th, 98th New York Infantry Regiments, 1862 to 1865. Chris, thanks for doing this with me. Good morning, Matt. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. We, we kind of met by accident yesterday. Uh, you, you were you were doing a book signing up at the uh, visitor center bookstore. I was. And I, my friend had asked me to go up there and check out and see if there was a book on the monuments. And I went and I found the book and you were there and I just started talking to you uh, and asked you to come on the show. And then I realized like about an hour later, I was like, wait a second. It, we were going to do this thing over the phone and months or weeks from now and then I realized well if he's here he might be here tomorrow and I'm off tomorrow so I talked to you and we went out and had a beer last night and uh, here we are sweating the beer out of our pores on the battlefield today so anyway I just started going through your book last night and this morning and it's fascinating to me because I've always wondered about uh, the medical department and you know the the surgeons and just the the whole hospital wing of the army and how it worked how it evolved and I'm aware of you know a lot of the stuff that we use today in uh, in civil and in military uh, medical procedures and, and whatnot stems from the Civil War and a lot of things stem from the Civil War and in wars in general like that we use in because it's it's those traumatic experiences that you kind of have to what's the old saying necessity is the mother of invention right and you have to figure these things out so that's what your book is about but when we have a guest on we always start with this one question so I want to get this out of the way before we get into your book why Gettysburg to you? Well, Matt, that's a very interesting question. I, I wish it was as simple as, you know, just because it's the biggest battle of the war gets the most attention. So therefore I feel like I should, I should study it. it, it to me, it's just much more than the battle itself. When you're sitting here and you're out here on the battlefield and you're looking at all the sloping hills, the mountains in the background, the monuments, it's such a beautiful place. But when you actually sit back and think of what really took place here in these fields, you know, after three days of fighting, you got 10,000 guys dead, 30,000 more wounded. And you think to yourself, how could such a beautiful place have witnessed such hell? And the first time I came to Gettysburg, I was around six with my parents. I didn't really care too much about it. I remember a little bit, but it wasn't until I kept coming back here when I was older that I really began to have an appreciation for this place. Mm. And every time I would leave, I would be sad. I was, I would say to myself, you know, I, I can't wait to get back there again. Yeah. And I just left five minutes ago. So it's kind of an unexplainable feeling that you only get by being here. And it's hard to kind of describe that to someone until they experience it for themselves. It's kind of it's kind of like when you ask a, a combat veteran what war is like, and they say, "Well, I can't really tell you unless you've been through it, because it's an indescribable thing." And it, uh, you and I almost cried at the bar last night talking about this because we both have the same answer to this question, and it's a, it's a, more of a spiritual thing, I think, for for you and me, and I think a lot of other people that I've spoken to, because you can't put words together that will really explain how you feel you can only kind of like poke at the answer but you never really get there yeah to a lot of people when when you talk about Gettysburg they they use the the term home yeah. to them it feels like home right 
and that's kind of the same feeling that I have. I know it's the same feeling that you have. Yep. So it's it's a very indescribable feeling when you're here walking these fields and you're walking around town. And and that feeling of home is is even weirder because as you were pointing out, there's that there's the beauty of what we can see here. And uh, then there's that feeling of home because the town itself is kind of fun. People are cool and there's things to do. And, you know, it's just it's an interesting little place. But then you have to juxtapose it with what happened here. And yeah, like you, like you're saying, it's, it's kind of hard to reconcile those two things. Why do I love a place where so many people tragically and horrifically died or were maimed or traumatized in ways we can't see on them, but they felt the rest of their lives? And that's what's so weird about it, but it's, it's fascinating. It is, yeah. It's definitely a weird place in that regard um, when you sit back and think about it and what really did happen here, but just one of those things I mean you know there's no other place really like it that I can think of where you have a mix of modern and old Mm -hmm. and a place that experienced such hell but it's a place that you want to keep coming back to and like people are enthusiastic about it like you know what I mean like we we get excited about oh we're going to Gettysburg and they plan their trip you know a year in advance like hey I'm I'm gonna be there next July for the anniversary (laughs) Right. It's very strange. It's very strange. But, you know, human beings are are strange. So, okay. So that's your why Gettysburg. Now, you actually had some experience working here at the National Park for a couple seasons. Is it seasonal or was it yearly? Uh, So it was seasonal. Uh, It started in May and then usually went till around end of August. And those were what years? 2007 and 2008. Okay. And uh, you then went into what? Like after that, what'd you do? So I started out here as an intern in 07, came back the following year um, after I graduated college and I was a seasonal park ranger. After that, I went home to my small town of Wheatsport, New York. Didn't really have a job, no idea kind of what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And I was in our local historical society back home. Uh, We're on the Erie Canal, so we had a small little historical society. And I discovered the letters written by a surgeon who was here at Gettysburg with the 111th New York. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get in contact with the family that had donated the transcribed letters. And from there, I basically sat in my parents' bedroom or uh, basement for a number of months, just started typing away. And that kind of formed the basis of the book. See, uh, now when you were there at the Historical Society, or if you go to any other historical society or something like or, or maybe even another national park, and if you ever get into a conversation with someone and tell them that you worked at Gettysburg National Military Park for a couple of years, do they kind of treat you like uh, with some kind of reverence and awe? Yeah, a little bit. I think to a lot of people, Gettysburg is kind of the highlight of Civil War parks. So if you tell someone, hey, I worked at Gettysburg, they're instantly, like you said, kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What did, what did you do? What was it like? Uh, I, I was at uh, Barnegat Lighthouse in New Jersey, right? And General Meade was an engineer who built it. Mm-hmm. And um, I went into the little museum and they had a cardboard cutout, or not, not a cardboard cutout, but a big cutout of General Meade in his uniform, probably around the time of this battle. Um, well, he was a major general in the picture. I don't know when it was taken. And uh, I said, I took a picture of it, and the guy asked me, like, something about it. And I said, oh, yeah, well, I, I'm moving to Gettysburg, and I used to live there, and uh, I'm moving back. I missed it. And, you know, General Meade, of course. And, oh, you, you live in Gettysburg? And, like, they're, they're, it's almost like, it's weird. It's like a weird thing. But we're, we're getting off the subject. So now, you write the book. Uh, you find these letters, you write the book. Uh, did you have an interest in medicine before that, or was this just kind of like an opportunity and you took it? Yeah, not really. I, you know, I was pretty much one of those guys that just followed the battles, uh, studied kind of the context of how the war started and, you know, things of that nature. And I never really took an interest in the medical core and the medical aspect of the Civil War until I did find these letters. So... 
you, you, like most of us, you were more interested in how the mess was made, but not how the mess was fixed. Correct. Yeah. No, it's one of those things that you don't really think too much about. A lot of people really, you know, once they study the battles and the troop movements and all that sort of stuff, well, after the battles are done, you have all these people laying here. Nobody really cares to think what happened to them, you know. Well, let's get into that then. So what happened? So we're, we're here now. Benton, uh, James Benton, who's the, the surgeon of the 111th, uh, assistant, surgeon. assistant surgeon of the 111th uh, New York at the time of Gettysburg, right? Yes. He was here at Gettysburg. He was. He was here at Gettysburg. Uh, one of his letters that he writes home to his parents, he mentions how he's basically too busy to give them a full account of what he witnessed here, and he would prefer to tell them that in person. So we don't really know what he saw here based on his own account. Yeah, that's right. Um, but, you know, you can basically surmise what he witnessed and what he was busy doing while he was here. Um, he would have been at the Catherine Gwynn Farm, which is just to the east of us down here on Cemetery Ridge. So, like, for example, for people who might be visiting or have visited and want to get an idea where that is, it's no longer there as a farm. It's a parking lot. Um, right behind the cemetery, at the base of the cemetery. It's going to be just south of the cemetery, in between the cemetery wall and where the park ranger law enforcement building is. Where I got pulled over the other day, Correct. actually. Yeah, he was sitting right there and he got me for running a stop sign. Another tip for visitors, if you're coming out of the parking lot uh, on Cemetery Hill onto the Tawny Town Road, come to a full stop. Okay, so... Uh, I get wounded. I'm in the 111th. I'm here at the wall. I get wounded. Uh, what happens to me? What's the procedure that I go through? So there's going to be three basic steps. Um, once the soldier's wounded, he's going to attempt to make his way back to the rear of the line. And it's the job of the assistant surgeon to have an advanced dressing line, basically about 200 yards, give or take, behind behind the line. What a safe distance, though. Safe distance, yeah. You know, they would try and find a gully, uh, an area protected by trees, things of that nature to help kind of stem any flying artillery that accidentally makes its way over there. Which makes sense because if you think here, we're on the western slope of Cemetery Hill, basically, right? Uh, or Cemetery Ridge. And the location of where the hospital was, or at least the the what would this be, the aid station, would yeah, they call so that? It would be the, the field dressing station. field dressing station. The location of that is, is on the eastern slope of it. So it's on the other side of the hill. It is, yeah. It's down kind of in a depression, in yeah. a little gully. Yeah. And it's basically away from stray musket fire and things of that nature. Okay, so so we know that that part of your book is accurate. <laughs> that got one, got one thing <laughs> right. got one thing right. Okay. So anyway, so go ahead. So he gets down to the, to the dressing station. Yep, so he makes his way down to the dressing station. There'd be the assistant surgeon and the hospital steward. Um, and their job is essentially to do two things. To pick out and identify the wound and, you know, take out any particles of clothing, look for the musket ball, anything that got lodged in the wound, they would attempt to clean that out. And then they're gonna stem the bleeding. They're gonna bandage it up real quick. And then they're gonna go ahead and get that soldier ready for transport further to the rear. So they're basically doing what we call triage. Yeah, so their they're, they're first line right there, the whole goal is to get that soldier to stop bleeding and make his way further to the rear where he can seek you know, more um, assistance. Yeah, more, more, more aid, essentially, and possibly amputation. In the United States Army and in European armies before the 1860s, was that system in place, or is that something new? So Jonathan Letterman was pretty much essential in creating that three-tier system of triage um, during the Civil War. So. Prior to Letterman instituting the Letterman system, they basically was disorganized series of, of medical care. Just whatever. Yeah. Uh, so triage, three tiers. Does that make sense? Triage, T R I. Just, it just dawned on me. <laughs> I was, right. I was. Well, I didn't know there were three parts, so that's why I was like, I should have figured it out. Okay, so I, I go back to the aid station to the first level of triage. My wounds are cleaned enough. 
I'm sent back, but I got, I've got, I got shot in my upper arm and my bone is shattered. So what's going to happen to me? I go Hello, Gettys nerds. It's Matt. And I hope you enjoyed that preview of our premium content that can now be found over at patreon.com. I just want to let you know that Addressing Gettysburg will always have free content for you to listen to in the forms of our narrative episodes like Antietam to Chancellorsville and the upcoming episode entitled Invasion, June 1863, appendix episodes, and our wildly popular Ask a Gettysburg Guide episodes. But episodes like Antietam to Chancellorsville take months to produce as things are now. I hear from people almost every day asking how long until the next episode is finished. And the answer is, when I have the time, I can do it. Your support at Patreon can cut down the time it takes to produce an episode by months. Maybe you don't care about that. Maybe the Ask a Gettysburg Guide episodes are what you like, but they leave you wanting to learn more. Well, fear not. More is what Patreon is all about. Patrons receive access to new premium episodes each week. These episodes are straight interviews or discussions with licensed battlefield guides, rangers, local historians, academics, authors, public historians, people from the Gettysburg community who do impressive things, and frankly, just about anyone who can talk on a subject related to Gettysburg. I want to make sure that the interest you already have in Gettysburg is enriched with our premium content. Your support means the world to me because that means it will be easier to produce content that will bring Gettysburg to more people and hopefully more people to Gettysburg. And the podcast episodes are just the beginning. So please go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash addressing Gettysburg and become a patron. I thank you in advance.